All right, we are about to head into our first champion select in the matchup of who do we got for our first game here? Macro Gaming versus Gentlemen's Club. First band coming in on the blue side is Olaf. Yeah, a tough pick all around this season. I mean, you've seen a lot of gameplay. A super safe a pick at all. Absolutely. In I mean, a guy that can just demolish and get rid of any CC. Ooh, and the beat. Gnar band on the other side. Interesting. Haven't seen too much Gnar around this region, but it hasn't picking up steam in regions like China. Absolutely. It's the items that really get him there now. And the Hecarim band and the Kaisa band coming Ooh, out. Oh, really, really targeting the jungler on the blue side. That is going to be interesting to see what he has left in his champion pool. But the Kaisa ban on red side, very strong AD carry, strong in every phase of the game. Great at getting a lead and an overall strong pick. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Kaisa's one of those champions where all of a sudden you're getting, the you know, a Q damage on you and you're done. Woo! Three jungle bans coming out from the blue side. You got to think they have a first pick in mind if they're committing that many resources. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things you take away three of his picks, then you pick his jungler. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it kind of forces his hand and what he's got left going on at that point. In the final bail, Camille. Oh, Camille. That's a great band right there. That is. Oh, my oh goodness. My God, that, that champion is. is an absolute menace. Oh, and the safe thresh first pick on blue side here macro gaming picking up oh the oh oh boy we might have a i know here for the first i know game. it's a tease i know it's a tease. oh there's no way i mean what a what a great moment to start this series off i mean you got i mean I, you gotta you gotta admit macro gaming probably would not see it coming it's honestly not even the worst pick no i mean you got yeah, that being said there's no way this gets locked in yeah and it was a you know teasing our our little hearts over <laughs> here but the vein pickup, another pretty strong AD carry on this patch, and a decent pick into Thresh. Very good at dip, dive, dodging around everything Thresh can throw. The box might throw a bit of a problem, but we'll see what other pick they have to complement this. Oh, and Anivia, another strong pick coming out this patch. Yeah. Really super good zone control. I have no idea why they buffed that. Well, Absolute godforsaken you know, champion. It's just one of those things, right? I mean, the wave clear has always been insane, and the fact that they've pretty much added more mana this season i mean she can keep that wave kill up forever being pushing on her oh impossible. oh absolutely impossible absolutely it's gonna be interesting oh, oh and rengar, the rengar pick. pick now rengar definitely going to be seeing maybe an eclipse maybe a dust blade out of him uh i would say with the dust blade i mean it's easier to get that pick up potential right at the start you get that little bit of an invis to kind of help you out so you don't have to just double w you can just double Ooh. Q. Oh, and a very, very safe staple pick from the mid laner, Oriana. Great scaling, pretty decent mid game now with the item changes and the new Leandries. And yeah. just overall strong pick, can't go wrong. No, you really can't. Oh, and, and we safe picks no matter. And what. we currently have one ball delivery system in the Rengar, so this definitely proven to be a decent combo That's so possible. far. Oh, and the Udier pick on the side of Gentlemen's Club. Now, this team, oh boy, if you can kite that team out, it's not looking so hot for him. No, I mean, it's one of those things where Vayne is actually a pretty good counter to Rengar. You just pop the ultimate and you roll as soon as he comes on to you. You can't really get the damage based off the second Q. It gives you a little bit of a leeway in situations like that. So I wonder if the Vayne can survive this fight. Did they just take it all? I mean, you don't have another right. pick as of right now from what we're seeing. Kind of interesting from the blue side. Not picking up an AD carry in response to the Vayne. We're going to see a lot of strong AD carries banned out. Yeah, and AD carries, right? It was season after season after season. All the names was, you know, buff the ADCs. <laughs> Finally here they get buffed. They're the number one champions out there right now. And the Malphite, the Jin, and the Ribbon Band. Ooh. Interesting on the Ribbon Band. Top, to laner, top laners are still up. Top laners are still up. And yep. they must have done some scouting with that Ribbon pick. Exactly. I mean, it's, you know, with the new uh, so Ravenous like Hydra and stuff like that, the AoE Ooh. damage is in there. Ooh, and and Shen two, Band. Two very safe tanks taken away on the side of Macro Games. Yeah, I it's going to be really interesting presence. to see what Gentleman's Club picks up here. Absolutely. If they're going to save top for a counter pick or if they pick up a staple support. Still the likes of Alistair, Leona, Rel. A lot of strong support picks still yeah. up in the air right I now. I mean, I almost feel like if I'm macro gaming, I pick Shen because the Shen rendering. Whoa! Oh, we wow. are. Are we seeing a Viger bot lane? It looks like a. No, that's gonna be Viger. Oh, is it Vayne top? We're seeing this game. Uh, and Viger. Honest, it's a little bit of a Viger bot. 
Oh we're boy, there's going on here. This is not what I expected in the slightest. Ooh. Oh, the Ophelio's still up and confident. Yep. In the he immobile AD carry. Oh, and the Wukong coming out top. I I'm not sure if Macro Gaming knows they're against the vein. And no. if they do, Wukong's a pretty decent pick in the vein. We get the knock up up, combine it with the Rengar. Vayne might be not be long for this world, but we will see now if it's going to be Vigar top of Vigar bot or Vigar support. Yeah. My money's on Vigar bot. It's possible. And the volley bear with the last pick coming out here, solid top. Oh, and, and it looks it looks like, like it will be Vigar support. And he's really great. I mean, you just max that E, you're looking at a one and a half second stun AOE. It's hard to beat. But the thing out of here is I've never seen the Felios lose. I mean, he's the number one champion I banned. Mm -hmm. So there's a reason behind it. Yeah, and that's what it's going to be. It is going to be Volibear Top, Anivia Mid, Udyr Jungle, Vayne, and Viger Bot on the blue side. We got Wukong Top, Rengar Jungle, Oriana Mid, Aphelios AD, and Thresh Support. What are your thoughts? A lot of power coming out on both sides. A lot of power. It's one of those things where I think the first couple fights really going to dictate what mm -hmm. happens for the rest of the match. I mean, the objective control, right? It can mm -hmm. really go both ways. You can wall him off with the Anivia, I, or you can ball him off with the Oriana. It's I, 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 to I gotta say right now, if Macro Gaming gets ahead, that is a scary Wombo team that we're not. It is. It is. We are going to see right, right. there. Right, and that's what we got to focus on. Are they looking for the lane kills? Are they looking for objectives? We're gonna analyze what the team ends up kind of doing here. I think it's gonna be an interesting first match. Absolutely. All right. Before the match kicks off, we were able to get a quick side interview with one of the players before the match. Bieber Fever. Talented man. Talented man. Oh, we can't wait for this interview. We can't wait to show you. With our next interviewee, we, we've got of Gentleman's Club. We've got Beeb Fever with us. Beeb Fever, tell me how excited you are for your first game. I want to smash. I'm really excited. Ooh, that's what we like that's to a, hear. That's a lot of energy coming that's, out. That's a lot of that's energy. the most energy we've seen yet. <laughs> I know. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> really? Oh, I mean, yeah. We, oh, yeah. This is our second interview. interview, too. Hell yeah. Okay, now, so big match coming up, right? You guys been preparing it all so far? Yeah. Yeah, we're uh, we're actually playing literally right now. Oh, oh fantastic. All right. Wow. All right. Any insight to any other teams you've played so far, especially your first matchup? Any insight into them? Uh, Nothing. Nothing I know about. Um, Some guy, went, some guy uh, messaged me saying macro gaming is really good. And uh, that's really the only one I've really, I guess, cared about. That's so. the second time we've heard good things about macro gaming. Uh, right it's, now. It's, it's It'll be, be interesting to see. Tough team to beat. Tough team to beat. So we're going to have to bring the A game in here. Oh, right. Uh, I really, what would you really want to smash. Oh, yes. <laughs> there you go. That's what we want to see. What would you say your strengths are as a team as a whole? Uh, Let's see. What do we get at? Probably. Dude, that's like a. That's like an interview for a job kind of question. Right? It's a loaded um, question. Probably our jungler. Uh, he's really, really good at like macro and like making calls and stuff like that. Uh, whereas like the rest of us are really just focused on our lane. So he'll kind of like he'll he'll basically do a, do all the work, just point us where to go, and then mm -hmm. we go. All right. Looks like he's pulling oh. the strings. All I right. Know. That's 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 hey, nothing good. wrong with that though. Nothing wrong with having one voice and having yeah. everyone follow. This oh, is true. Right. Now it's, it's much. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to shut all. That sounds awful. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Now we have an unofficial quote here from somebody in the league that said, "I could still go not ad nami and clap you mid." What do you have to say about that? Good fucking luck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh snap. Okay. Are you kidding me, well, dude? I get okay. It. If only someone actually <laughs> said that. Yeah, unofficial quote in the league by somebody. So, AD <laughs> Nami, one, one, of, one of many unofficial quotes by Chase. Of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I oh, mean, that's a you got me fired quote. up with with. They didn't even say that, and I'm all fired up now. Uh, that's right. what that's what we're here like, for. Ooh. That's what we're here for. We gotta get Ooh. that energy going. That's right, it's right. I mean, you're. I got the. You see the mentality coming right. off of you. You the, know, you want yeah, we, this. We're talking for a little bit. Would you describe yourself as an emotional player? You feed off emotions. You like positive emotions. You like being in there. Aggressive. That's it, so. All yeah, right. for sure. That's what we like to see. Absolutely. Now, you're coming out there. You're looking for kills, right? 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So oh, we're yeah. gonna see a lot of action in the mid lane. Oh, here. we're, we're excited keep a for that. On him. Yeah. Oh my god. Thank you for taking the time to join us, Beeb Fever, and we will see you soon on the rift. Absolutely. Yeah. See I'm excited. Oh, so we're excited, excited too. Oh, there All we right. go. Yeah, and Let's watch go. out for that AD <laughs> Nami. It might come at some point. Yeah, your your cheeks are getting gonna... clapped, kid. Yeah. All right, here we go. Queuing into our first game, Macro Gaming versus Gentleman's Club. How excited are you, Chase? On a scale of one to eight, eight. All and right. Here we are launching the off. The first seconds of the SLS. Who could be more excited? All right. Looks like pretty coordinated starts for both teams here. We're going to see a top side start on the red team. And it looks like we're just going for a straight blue invade on the blue team. Probably just going to trade vision. Not going to hit each other. Yeah, I wouldn't look for anything too serious kind of going on right now. Each team kind of hoping that, you know, maybe the other team's there. Uh, or whatever, but here we are. Oh, is it? Is it possibly a Nivea support in Viger mid? Uh, it, but judging yeah, by the fact it, the mid lane is playing Viger. Yeah, oh, right. I goodness. mean, uh, this is I kind was of not, ex got going not on. expecting that, but e either one of them honestly scales pretty good. Viger might have to take a little yeah. bit longer to get oh, there. Hey, but it's the a cla damage is it's there. a classic combo, like from season one, Vayne. Anivia. Yeah. Put the wall up. Easy condemn. Condemn them right now, in there. It's do they have the coordination to pull that off? It remains to be seen. I hope so. You know, what I'm kind of looking for is the old classic. is the uh, Twitch and the Cassiopeia. That is a classic one. You don't really see too much. I mean, you can just proc this right off the poison. Mm -hmm. the Cassiopeia, I love it. What about Cassiopeia? There's no Cassiopeia. We talked about Cassiopeia. But... In Twitch. In Twitch? Yeah. You didn't know about that? Oh, I did know that, but I don't see how it's relevant to the Anywho, we're going to see pretty standard starts here. Red side starting off on their blue, and blue side starting off on their red. Yeah, easy easy jungle passing for both of them. Not really too much pressure or anything to worry about. So Bar, you're just going to have a nice, quick, easy farm in here on both sides. Mm -hmm. Right. Still no advantages to be seen so far. How do you feel about these matchups top? I feel like Volibear might have a little bit of the edge over the Wukong in the early game. Uh, uh possibly. I mean, a absolutely. I'm kind of more focused on what the bot lane's gonna be right now. I mean, Vayne has a hard time pretty early game. Out That's here. a known fact. Aphelios has... Benji doing a really good it. job of spacing against the minion wave here, putting a decent amount of pressure on. Oh, but a nice Q and an auto there. It's gonna have a decent trade. Oh, and it looks like... Predictably, the Viger is getting shoved in by the Orianna. Orianna has a massive advantage at that in the early game with her passive, with her Q, with her W. Really easy for her to shove those minion waves right into Viger's face. Yeah, I mean, but as long as you get those Q stats, really, what does it matter in the end? Mm -hmm. Ooh, and a decent amount of damage being taken onto the Wukong. Wukong's gonna need a little more items and a little more levels before he's able to fully combat that Vala there. Baldur just looking to tank it up this game. A fairly decent showing though by the red side bot lane. They're taking a pretty decent punishment, but they're trading it back pretty decently onto the support. Yeah, it's one of those things you can just kind of do. Like, you hit me, I'll hit you back type thing. Who comes out in the end? Uh, it's going to be a qu couple potions just burning on each side, and that's when we'll start really seeing the fights going down after that. Mm -hmm. Oh, junglers are converging on the top side. Let's see if the camera pans over to that. Doesn't look like it. Looks like Gutierrez will get control of that scuttler. Let's see. And top lane once again. Volibear with the pretty decent CS lead. Got a short little 7 CS lead at the start. Let's see if that has any room to grow. Bot lane, however... Bot lane is still looking pretty decent for the vein. Has a decent CS advantage. Now there's more minions on for blue side to pick up for the Felios to pick up. So we can see that equalize very soon. Yeah, it's something like this where you're pretty much just waiting on for the jungler to make a move in a scenario. It's which one goes first and pretty much whatever one ends up gank in mm -hmm. the lane, you're going to just notice pretty much the objective not, taken oh, down. There's the a lot side. of gank opportunities for the Rengar early. The only angles I see are maybe from bot side. Oh, and it looks like we are going to have a gank coming in by a good flash by Benji there. Oh, and a nice hook. Can they trade some damage onto this Udyr? Looks like a whole lot of nothing and a good chunk onto the vein. Thresh loses his flash, but a pretty decent trade back by the blue side. 
and a really good brand to flash by Thresh, understanding his limits and what's going to kill him. Absolutely. I mean, it's a preemptive move, and you know you got to do it just to not give up that lead regardless mm. of what's going on. All right, and Rengar in the jungle farming away. We're probably going to see that right up to level 6. His early gank's not the strongest unless he has lanes to set himself up. Yeah, and I, I wonder what's going to happen in the solo lanes here. I mean, are we going to see a level pa 6 power spike fight, or what do you, what do you think? I can't really I can't really say it depends on if they want to converge on to objectives like dragon or rift herald I can easily see either team having an advantage at the dragon Yeah, no, I mean it's absolutely true absolutely true I mean in with the the mountain dragon nothing too crazy going on it's a nice little armor and magic resist for oh, a couple oh, champions. Hammer went a little lazy there. All right right back into the action and we are going to see that Volibear building up a nice steady CS lead over the Wukong. But the Wukong just gracefully, slightly losing this lane. Playing to jungle pressure and honestly doing a pretty good job of it. Ooh, Ooh and the nice setup by the Aphelios. Oh, and that Anivia is not long for this world. Into the egg form. Will we see first blood here? And that'll be we first do. blood going over to the Aphelios. Bertrand Hoover with the first kill of the SLS. Yeah. Exciting stuff. Absolutely. I mean, it's a nice pick that you get to see, and the chain CC just follows up. It's a situation like that where there's just oh, you're, and, uh, nothing you can do. And uh, honestly, a perfect set of guns by the Aphelios. Got the long range one along with the one that gives you the snare. Yeah, and Fantastic. that's why that's why I banned that champion. I mean, his utility is just so incredible. It's hard to match it. Ooh, and we oh we have Udyr caught out. Trapped. We are going to see his flash. Burn. Oh, oh my goodness! What, what a nice kid! What a monster! Donate the kill over to the Rengar, and that is going to lead right into the first dragon of the wow. SLS. And that is a beautiful read by Benji. Oh he knew God. that he was trapped in here. He only had one option out, and he had that option covered for him. Beautiful, beautiful Thresh play. A perfect preemptive strike. Maybe a little telegraph by the Udyr, but he didn't have a lot of options left to him. No, absolutely not. I mean, you get a quick 2-0 start here. You're getting your first dragon. Things are looking good. I mean, if you're the red team here, you either look for a, a try to get another pick to force mm. something or just keep farming it up. Not looking good for the red team early. I honestly would give the scaling advantage to the blue side and... If Red Team can't pick this up soon, sure, they have damage scaling, but if you're going to have a Wukong and a Rengar dive in that back lane, it is not long for this world. Yeah, but, I mean, I think you're sleeping on the Viger E. That thing, the Event Horizon, I mean, it's just not really going to be up to get over. really going to be up to proper implementation of that E for decent zone control. And with the Anivia as well, their zone control might be enough to prevent hard engages, but... Looks like we're going to see a flash out of this Oriana. Holding the flash. A little bit greedy. Is it warranted? All right. Oh, and a beautiful turnaround ultimate by the Oriana. Not going to lead to much, though. No damage to follow that up. Oh, but Rengar feeling frisky. Going in. Had the support from the Thresh, and it's a whole lot of nothing mid lane. No, a whole lot of sums burned. Uh, that's it. really kind of all we were looking for. All on each side. Flash on each side. That is true. Flash gone for red side top laner and for the Oriana mid. So, would not be surprised to see another repeat gank to that mid lane anytime soon. And honestly, that roam put Wukong right back into the game. Shot himself ahead in CS, and that's not a position this Volibear wants to be in. Flashless against the Wukong, who's starting to get his gore drinker. Not where he wants to be. Yeah, it's one of those things where you hate when he gets that item because then he's just so strong and you can't take him. But I think Volibear is one of those champions who just has so much health. I mean, the guy just doesn't die. Ooh, and a beautiful gank wow. by the Rengar. Misses Damn. the Bola, and that was the difference between a kill and survival. But with that Viger flashless, that man is a sitting duck for the next repeat gank. And with Oriana ult on the horizon, it's any moment before that Rengar repeats. It oh, really oh is. Rengar's popping up on the Herald. Will he steal it? Who did it go over to? It looks like Red Side, if I had to guess. And I don't know if yeah, I don't know if Rengar wants this fight. No, I mean I don't know if Rengar wants this fight, but it looks like Oriana comes in for the proper support. Oh, we got the Thresh coming in. Go for the flash hook oh, over the here. That's gonna be another, another kill pick. going yep. on to the mid laner. And this Thresh it came to play today.
He really did. I mean, you you get the Rift Herald. You, you, there's a brief overcommitment there where they thought there was going to be a bigger fight than there actually was. And you get in a scenario. Oh, and there. this Viger. Will he survive? Is the damage there? And it looks oh. like just enough CC on the red side to save his life. But a great, great fish by the Thresh. This man is balling out today. He really is. And... He just doesn't die. I mean, this is the second time we've seen him with nothing for HP. That's going to tilt you a little bit if you're mm. on the blue side here. For sure. For sure. And both ADs on both sides scaling up quite well. Oh, oh that Orianna yeah, is not right going to survive yeah. at all. A really, really nice time to roam by the top laner. For seriously, and now you have the rift power here. I mean, you're looking to pick up a couple plates if you set this thing off. Oriana's not getting back into lane. Rengar's nowhere near to rotate right now. You're just going to get some free plates. Yeah, we could see two, three, maybe even four plates, depending on how hard they commit to this. But really, really good play to get them some semblance of back into this. Yeah. I mean, oh, and they're committing the TP here. So Orion is not going to have that for the next fight. Rengar, but they think oh, they have gauge. enough to kill him. Rengar with the damage, and that is going to be enough to finish off the Volibear. Donate the kill over to the Rengar, and he is starting to get scary. It's true. I mean, it's one of those things where the Rengar saying, Hey, listen, I'll frontline, I'll lead, just follow me. And it's been working out so far. All right. We're going to have next dragon coming up quite shortly, and we got to imagine that blue side is going to have sheer control over that. I, you know, it's weird. I wouldn't say sheer control. Uh, the Volibear and the Udyr, they can just frontline extremely well. And Volibear's TP is coming up, while Wukong will not have TP for this fight, which is exactly why he is recalling to make sure he is there and ready for the fight. Oh, he cancels his recall. A little greedy by the Wukong when he has a TP disadvantage. So we will see how this shapes up bot lane. Dragon coming up any second now. But it looks like not much going on. Udyr looking to see what he can do against Whoa, this Wukong. Whoa, what happened? Up solo here. kill in the middle. Whoa! Trade kill A going trade on the middle. Kill. Wow! Where was that? And if only we had a cameraman. Well, you know, it's one of those things you just got to give him the benefit of the, the, the doubt Dang. over there. Oh, right, right at the red side turret. Just trading blows left and right and... Honestly, that's just more good news for the Viger. Just trying to survive. Down. Almost. Event Horizon. Double CS on the Oriana over the Viger. Any kills he can get are more than welcome. Yeah, uh, I mean, you're struggling with the CS there. All right. Oh, we might have kill. a smite fight here. This Udyr is looking to play, but he is going to get zoned off. Is he just going to go for the AD? That is not the kind of AD you want to fight no. with those guns. Oh, Volibear coming in from the side. I don't think oh, Rengar nice is making it out of this. Can he? Oh my word! He is di dip dodge diving, but he wow. cannot escape. And that's going to be two kills given over for the dragon with no real response by the blue side. Yeah, I mean, you get the dragon. You get the little bit of extra damage. Sure, you lost two kills, but in this early game situation here, their, it pays off. Their Viger really is starting to get big. Though that CS differential is pretty much going to set their goal that near even. Probably still a decent advantage for the Orianna. Yeah, I mean, Orianna is just one of those champs. Never falls off. Never. I, I mean, you can go 0 and 12 and you still have an impact on the game. Oh, and Orianna using that W, using that E to get out safely. And this Volibear makes you think who really is the jungler on their team. That man has ganked mid more than the jungler has. I'm, oh, oh, and a beautiful oh, condemn out by the vein. And that, yes. will, that will force both sums out of the Aphelios, and that makes him a sitting duck bot lane. Expect to see more pressure coming down here. But with the Thresh back here, can they threat? I don't think they can even threaten this tower at all. No. They're going to have to soak EXP and wait for help to arrive. Yeah, he I mean, walks up at all, he's going to get sums. burst down. You pull both the sums bot lane, but the, I mean, the top lane is really where the pressure's at right Ooh. here. Ooh. You're going to have to send something to rotate. All Wukong right. is just taking the tower. He's it pushing looks the like, second tier It looks tower. like they're just playing for bot lane to just gracefully lose right now. They're really playing up the top side, really trying to fight that Udyr wherever they can. And Wukong really starting to flex his muscles up top lane. Yeah, he's becoming the powerhouse we knew he would be. Oh, and I 
come to my attention. We appear to have missed a solo kill top lane. So that is not what we want to see, but what are you going to do? First game, first game jitters, we'll get there. You know, it happens. Sometimes these players just take matters into their own hand. We don't even have the time to react. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I would say we got a little over a 3k gold lead on the blue side. Oh, and it looks like it's getting even more. The Vayne already dead. The Anivia wow. double kill for the Aphelios. And oh my god. 3 0 Aphelios at 15 minutes. No team wants to see that. No, like I said, I hate Oh, that. the ultimate onto the Viger. Does he have the ability to get out? Oh, a nice little jump. Beautiful. Over. Uh, seriously, as long as you make that commitment, I mean, you're going over. He had the ward there. He had the vision. The flash does nothing. I mean, of course, you can't predict that there's a ward, but he tried. He tried, and unfortunately, the Rengar could just follow him regardless mm -hmm. of any movement there. But honestly, this is looking like more and more one-sided by the second. Macro Gaming, really, having their name ring true this game. They have beautiful map control of this game, and their solo plays are honestly what's winning them the game. It is. I mean, they've, uh, they've had a couple solo kills. We've seen a trade mid. I think that this still could kind of go any way, to be honest oh, with I, you. I, I vastly disagree with that. Oh, and it looks like Anivia got absolutely ransacked bottom lane. If only we knew what happened. But what are you going to do? It looks like this Vayne is trying to farm safely, but Wukong might have other ideas. Does he commit? Looks like he's just waiting for Vayne to push up. Will Vayne take the bait? Uh, Doesn't look like it. No, she oh, wants to oh, go bad. AD carry sees farm. AD carry take farm. But she's going to wait for the wave to bounce far enough back. And Wukong also has enough patience to spare here. She does. I don't let's... think the invisibility in an E dash gets you over there. But let's see. Oh. And it looks like Vayne is going to make the smart play and recall. But what is Wukong looking to do here? Just placing some vision down, going to catch the wave, and nothing much going on there. Yeah, I'll just pick up some extra farm, get a little bit more ahead. Eh, it was worth the wait. You missed a wave or two, but you got some room to spare. All right, here. Now, that cold advantage we were talking about earlier, up to 5k on the blue side at 17 minutes. That is a hard number to overcome. With both dragons too, there's not a lot that Gentleman's Club can play for here. Yeah, uh, yeah it's a tough, tough start. It is, but you gotta start thinking, what's the way to get back into the game when I'm in a situation like this? And really, it's just looking for picks. Although Blue Side does have the ability to, I think, get some picks a little bit harder, it's still there for the Gentleman Club. Oh, definitely, for sure. Got Anivia stun, you got Viger E, there's a plenty of tools for them to come back in this game. But it looks like they're going to get pressure on mid lane in exchange for this dragon. There is no need for them to force the fight here. Looks like Benji's getting caught out. They do not want to take this fight. They got a number disadvantage. Oh my oh. god, the Rengar going in on top of the Orion ult. But is this really the fight they want? That number disadvantage. Can the Wukong get their wow. salvage? It looks like. It's going to be a huge win for Gentleman's Club. Wukong sitting on a ward. Does he feel confident? I would not if I were him. Looks like he is just going to get walked right on out. And another good trade of kills by Gentleman's Club. Oh, and the Volibear took the wrong path. Will it matter? Does not look like it. Volibear will walk out just fine. This vein getting a little frisky, but she is just perfectly safe. And remember what I was saying. I mean, I was saying it's still anyone's game. You can't, indecisive, you can't sleep in, on the volley bear health. I mean, the guy can just front line. Indecisive to the movements by Macro Gaming. Splitting calls between pushing mid and oh, it's kind of almost trying to fight the dragon at the same time. They got caught out in a rotation that they did not want. But at the end of the day, really, they still get mid lane turret. They still get a ton of pressure pushing into the inhibitor. It's I still say, at the end of the day, Macro gaming definitely comes out with the advantage yeah not all hope is lost on a little play like that it's one of those things where you go okay they got some power let's bunker down or let's go on the aggressive let's see what we got Ooh, and the name of the game now is split push wukong is going to have all side lane control this game got the gore drinker and the hydra both queued up built in and he is going to be healing off everything and doing a ton of damage yeah and I wonder what the game plan is for stopping Rengar. I mean, obviously he's going for either the Anivia or the the Vayne. 
Now, I mean, do you just shut him down? You turn all things to him? Or oh, and it looks like a Felios is done, but the flash is going to be enough. And a beautiful use of his ultimate, beautiful wow. use of his guns, and that will be a kill. On to Macro Gaming. But, Gentlemen's Club will get the turret. Oh, and it looks like Volibear is not done yet. Oh, and not. more disrespect coming out of Macro Gaming. Beautiful. Not as tanky as he thinks, and it looks like we might actually have ourselves a game here. I think so. I mean, it's something where you just throw the Viger Event Horizon down. You just drop the Anivia all anyone and stuff inside Mac of that. If I were it's Macro like Gaming, I would strongly be considering bringing the Wukong over. That looks like it might be exactly what they're trying to do here. Wukong with the pincer attack here. You've got the Rengar coming oh. from the sky. Who's going to die? Someone is getting ulted. And it... Oh, my oh God. there's Everyone the damage. Dead. Three men died, and that is going to almost certainly lead to Baron. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking That was a too. beautiful tech play by the Rengar. Using the Flash, but in the last couple frames of his ultimate, still managing to get that off. Getting the bounce on top of the Wukong ultimate. And tons of damage coming up between that Rengar, Wukong, and Orianna. Not to mention the Aphelios. This game is all but over for Gentleman's Club. I mean, seriously, what do you do to combat that damage they got like no, that? They got no mid lane turret, and they only have inhibitor turrets in the top and bot. It, honestly, Macro Gibbon could just be playing with their food right now, and they could still come out with the victory. Now, what do you say? If you were macro gaming, would you be running the whole team down mid to get that inhibitor, or would you go more of a one three one, one four zero? What are you What are you thinking here? We put Wukong on the split, but who else would? Yeah, I, if I'm macro gaming, I throw Wukong on the split. You don't really have anyone that can mash him at this point, and then you just push with the four. I mean, if mm -hmm. they group up, you just you throw put, the Oriana all on them. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and it looks like they're going to be doing just that. I'm not exactly... They're clearing out vision for the dragon, but that is not on the table anytime soon. It looks like they may just group as five for the bot lane after they get some vision. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where they said, Ooh. you know what? We know our power. They're going to put... We know what we can take. We're I like this. I like do. this. You put Wukong in the mid lane, put the rest of them in bot. That provides way less escape avenues if the rest of their team is in bot over mid. Really smart play by Macro Gaming here to properly utilize their resources. And you got Rengar raiding in the rings, and it looks like an indecisive call by Gentleman's Club. And wow, Anivia is going damage. to be destroyed. Yeah. That damage coming out of Wukong is just too much to handle. And that is almost certainly going to be two inhibitors, maybe even three, maybe even the game. Yeah, I think you take two inhibitors here, no problem. I mean, Gentleman's Club is just going to make a last stand somewhere, but where is oh, it going to oh. be? Oh, and that's not going to be enough from the Wukong, but... They might just take these two inhibitors and rotate top, or will they try to push for the end? No, they're Can't going imagine to with the death time of the Nivea almost up. They have the vision cleared. They're going to be walking right over to Dragon, and there is nothing Gentleman's Club can do to contest this. No, you got to give it up. You got to sit there. You got to pray that you can right. defend these two. Wukong in. going for the early back. Has the TP queued if needed, but it looks like he's just going to waltz his way up top lane. Maybe try to get that wave going and get the final inhibitor to seal this game. Yeah. I mean, the power spike, it just keeps rising, it keeps rising, <sighs> and it keeps rising. And so far, we've seen no answer there, back from Gentleman's Club. There's a lot of power in those picks on the red side, but the problem is they get behind. They do not have the tools to get back into this game. And a really, really rough showing by the Anivia. But, hey, first game jitters, we're all going to have those games. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where if you pick that Anivia move, you've got to kind of either get some early kills or you gotta uh, hope for a late game scenario mm -hmm. what will gentlemen's club do to get back into this game they are down they have a pretty decent vision line out so they might be able to catch people out but i don't think macro gaming is going to give them that avenue looks like they're just going to slowly take their time methodically clear the vision in the top side push up the wave and get that last inhibitor who are trying to secure the blue buff i don't think that's going to help you too much there buddy that might that is too little too late the first wave crashing. So like Volibear comes and picks that up. Rest of the team just slowly clearing vision again. Prepping for that next bear. And it's a ways off, but you can never be too early. Yep. Oh, and it looks like they almost baited them in for a fight there. But that is Viger E down. That is going to be a go signal for Macro Gaming if they so choose. 
Oh, little fish by Thresh there. It didn't connect, but it doesn't matter. That damage on to the vein. Just the Orianna. And this follow there, that is going to seal the game. He doesn't have enough to take him out. Boom! Oh, oh, man. Five. Man. That, that is incredible. That is by far the play wow. of the game. And that will wow. end it. Macro Gaming taking the wild. first game of the SLS over Gentleman's Club in a stunning one-side victory. Oh. Beautiful, beautiful first game. That's the kind of excitement we want to see. No, seriously. I mean, that is the most perfect ultimate you can get there to finish off the game. Woo! Incredible. And the Rengar leaving before the game concludes with the swag. You gotta love that. You oh. really do. It's all a hype these days. All right. What do you think went wrong there for Gentleman's Club? I mean, there's a couple things. I mean, at that point in the game, you just got to say to yourself, hey, listen, Vayne's our only hope. They got it's two items and their boots. What can we do to protect her? But in that's, a scenario like that, you got nothing. Well, that's the risk in first picking Vayne. They just pick super pick, aggro picks. The Rengar, a tough pick for the Vayne. So is the Wukong. They just get on top of her and she dies. Doesn't matter if she builds shield bow, whatever. She is not going to survive that. No, and that's something unfortunate. I mean, when you take a pick like that, it's mm -hmm. all risk, high reward. But if you don't get there. You're left stranded in the dust. And the Viger pick, honestly, some question marks there. A really strong pick if you can get it going, but again, another pick that's easily picked off. Mm, yeah, I mean, I think the heart was there. I think they had a strategy mm -hmm. they were, they were kind of They wanted for. to scale, and Macro Gaming did not allow it. Not allow it at all. That's the last post game here. We got to have Benji, the support from Macro Gaming. Yeah. Fantastic game, fantastic thresh play. And at first pick Thresh, are we? Is that a comfort pick? Is that a power pick? What was your thought going with the first pick Thresh? All right, fantastic. Seriously, I mean, it looked good. It, it, it looked clean on there. We had a nice play throwing the hook Thank over you. into the dragon pit. I mean, it was something oh. that got us pretty excited, if, I'm being, if I do say best, so myself. One of the best plays we've seen so far today. Absolutely. Can't go wrong with I, I that. Mean, right? it, it's going to be hard to top. It's, it's gonna definitely going to be top, hard to right? top. All right, how did you feel about lane positions going into that game? We were saying the only chance they had to win lane was maybe top lane with the Volivir, but every other lane seemed to be doing quite well. Yeah, uh, so when they picked their bot lane, it was pretty weak lane, and we were confident that we could just... So, so their team scales really well, but mm -hmm. we were confident that if we played the early game towards bot side and stack dragons, that they wouldn't have much of a chance to come back. Um, and then... Our, our jungler had a really good gank on the Rengar to kill the Anivia early, which gave us a lot of river control. Mm -hmm. And their lane doesn't have a lot of push, so we could pressure them and uh, get wave priority and then play for early dragon. No, so, no. so we were pretty confident, and yeah, we, we felt good about how Definitely. our lanes were set up. Definitely a good strategy going in there, playing to the team's strengths. Uh, how did you feel about the showing from your opponents? How did you feel they responded? Do you think, how do you feel about their picks? Anything that really surprised you? Uh, I was surprised with the Anivia support. I thought it was actually the... Uh, it was, I thought it was going to be Viger support because I think that's a little bit that's better we into Thresh. Too. Once you can put the box out when I throw for a hook. And it's also better against the Rengar ulti. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was surprised when they went with the Anivia because I think Anivia mid is, is pretty strong right now too. Uh, besides that, I think they were just playing to scale for the late game. But I think it was a little bit hard for them because they had really weak lanes and we could uh, pressure objectives much harder earlier um but i think they given how kind of poorly the early game went for them they they definitely tried to make some picks and force some fights even when they were behind mm -hmm. and they didn't seem like they were playing super tilted like they kept trying to force fights which is is good make a comeback so mm -hmm. definitely good for them for doing that and uh you know trying their hardest even when behind yeah they definitely did make a pretty decent effort to come back into that game but it seemed like a little bit of too little too late I mean, a couple times you guys got caught out, but at that point, it was really pretty much set in stone who was going to win that game. They didn't have any answers for the Wukong or Rencar diving into the back line. No, and it kind of yeah. makes you think, what do you think would have happened if they went through with that Teemo pick? 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, the game of Fig probably would have been, been really OP until like uh, maybe the Aphelios yeah, blind him or of, something. Of course, I mean, the guy's got a global taunt. I mean, he's hitting you for yeah. your entire health bar over three mushrooms. I mean, you can't right. beat him. You can't beat him. Yeah, that's true. You just bop kids with that pick. It's pretty OP. It's, it's true. It's not it's, that bad. It's true. Now, are we going to keep seeing Thresh from you, or you have a couple other picks? Uh, maybe. I think it's it's a, well, I don't want to give away our picks, but it is a comfort pick of mine. So if it's if it's open and it feels good for the comp, I might, I might whip it out here and there again. Go Ooh. for some more flash predictions. Oh, I like the All confidence right. coming All out. Right. Yeah. Well, a really, really strong showing from Macro Gaming and a fantastic showing from the Thresh. Uh, if you had to say who we to give the MVP to that game, who are you going to give it to on your team? Oh, gosh, that's tough. I think everyone on our team played really, really well. I think our jungler uh, had some... He had really good map control, tracked the other jungler really well. Um, had some really good timely ganks and snowball early. But then also, you know, our top did a super good job just being kind of on an island by himself. And then that Orianna off at the end was was massive. So it's really hard to pick one. Uh, I would probably give it to myself, though. No, I'm just kidding. No, I think absolutely. probably the Rengar, the, the Rengar played really well. I would certainly uh, give it to you for the early game. Of, yeah, certainly. thank you. But yeah, just a really good overall team performance. And everyone did their job really well and, and we were able to snowball and, and close out the game early so yeah, oh, it right. really was it was a good performance i think from both teams you know one came out a little bit stronger but this is you know first game going on this is something that we still yeah. gotta wait yeah. we get still gotta see where it goes from here of course it's a win in the book always helps your cause there's no doubt about that but you know when they they might go back they might learn some stuff all right yeah well that's right. Fantastic first game, Benji. Can't wait to talk to Thanks. you again, and good luck in the next game.